I love my dogs. I do. I'm serious. But sometimes they chew on things that they shouldn't. Exhibit A. Even if you don't have animals, I'm sure you've seen that kind of damage from just normal wear and tear. These things get kicked out of the walls, they get kicked out of your laptop, twisted around, and I've had some fail just like that. Not only is that a fire hazard, but then they stop working. And this one stopped working at the worst possible time. Murphy's Law, I guess. But we're gonna fix it right after the intro. All right, so before we get into fixing this cable, let's talk about options, because fixing this cable isn't your only option. We all know that most of these adapters break into two pieces. You got the cable that goes into the wall, nice big three prong, and then you got the cable that's actually broken that goes into the laptop. Now, I never go to manufacturer's website because I always know that it's outrageous in price. I actually just for the hell of it went to the manufacturer, looked up the price for this specific one, and each half cost almost 60 bucks plus whatever they want to charge me in shipping. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to spend 60 plus dollars on a replacement cord that all I need to do is resolder the wires. I mean, you do have other options. You can go and get a universal one off eBay or Amazon or a store that specializes in aftermarket batteries and power chargers for laptops and other electronics. I have had good luck in the past. You just have to make sure that the power adapter you're getting has the right voltage, has the right amperage, and has the right adapter plug. Now most of the universal ones do come with an assortment of plugs at the end. And these are universal adapters I've seen as cheap as 20 bucks, even less. You just got to be careful what you're buying. But I'm even too cheap for that, so I'm going to fix it. And you're going to watch and learn something, all right? So let's get into a top-down view and get this thing done. So what is it that you're actually going to need besides your damaged power cable. Some type of wire strippers, which I'm actually too lazy to even get those anymore. Half the time I just use a razor blade, but you gotta be careful with the razor blade. Stripping wires, it can get ugly pretty quick. So, you got some wire strippers, makes life easier. Next thing you'll need, heat shrink tubing. 127 pieces I got for four bucks. 450 I think at Harbor Freight, but pretty much anywhere sells them. And got yourself a soldering kit. This is a gas powered soldering kit. I do not necessarily prefer it over an electric. I'll explain why when I'm doing the actual repair, why I don't like them for this specific application. Last thing, if you have it, some helping hands, but they aren't required. All right, so let's get down into it. All right, first things first, we gotta clip off as much wire as possible that we can salvage from the short end here. I know it hurts. It hurts so bad. So that's pretty much as much wire as I could salvage. And if you're wondering why the black wire has so much length here, it was pulled out, but the black wire was actually wrapped around the other wires inside the rest of the cable, which is why it's sort of kinked all along here. I already tried pulling those out some more, didn't happen, so I'm just gonna clip them all off evenly. So there we have it, we have a fresh start right here. So we're gonna work on the head a little bit. We're gonna cut off this outer sheath here, probably about an eighth of an inch away from where this ribbed part starts. This is where a knife comes in handy. Nice and gentle, because you don't want to cut into the individual wires inside. Once you start the cut, you can bend it and you'll be able to see if anything's come through. Fresh blade helps. All 
right. Your wire strippers. We're gonna have markings on them down here. It may be different for other wires, for other cords, but these ones look to be about 18 gauge. We're gonna give it about three eighths of an inch or so. That's why I don't like wire strippers. They don't always work. The cheap ones don't always work. Try that one more time. That's a little better. We're gonna do the same for the next three. finish that blue wire with my knife. It was a thinner gauge wire. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with the long end of the wire. Now we just gotta strip these individual wires just like we did for the other end. Gotta be careful, especially with the thin strands of wire that you don't cut through it with the knife. All right, we gotta figure out what we need for heat shrink tubing. I'm gonna end up putting on like three or four. If I don't end up using one or two, I can always cut those off later. I know it's a waste, but these things are uh, pretty cheap. You don't wanna forget to put these on, because I've done that. I've soldered wires and then realized that I had no way of getting heat shrink tubing on them after the fact. Not fun. Then you're stuck using either electrical tape or you're pulling it apart and redoing it. So there's four on there. That's gonna be used to replace the outer sheath once I'm done with the individual wires. I'm gonna cut back this sheath. I'm gonna put links down in the description for everything that I use here, as well as some other options. Check them out, get what you need. So we got the wires stripped, we got the heat shrink tubing on, ready to go. Next thing we gotta do is solder them up. We're gonna start by fraying the ends of the wire. I don't really know what this method's called. A fray and twist. I mean, I'm cool with it, if you're cool with it. We can do that. It's called the fray and twist. But you want to make sure it's twisted up. Do we need a close up of that? All right. 
That's ready for solder. Cool. I actually had to add a piece of electrical tape just to shield the heat from the heat shrink connectors just so they wouldn't start melting. This is my one big problem with gas powered soldering irons. The heat has to go somewhere. You'll see right here, this little hole, that's where your exhaust comes out. You need to make sure that this port is facing away from anything rubber, any heat shrink tubing, because it will melt it. Normally your kits come with a little sponge, you know, a household sponge that's got some water and it's good enough. Most of them come with some type of solder. Saves money. I'm gonna get this thing heated up. What I like to do is add a little solder to the tip of this. It's just gonna get a better connection. Alright, it's not pretty, but it does its trick. Just gonna reset this. Going to town with the white ones. Fray and twist. I'm gonna put links down in the description for the soldering iron I used and some other options. Cause like I said, I'm not a huge fan of the gas powered ones for this type of project. Electrical soldering irons are usually better and you can get cheap, you know, 25, 30 watt hobbyist type of soldering irons for 15, 20 bucks. Right there, just paid for itself. All right, white one's done. And moving on to the blue wire. If you guys would like me to do a full review on different electric and gas powered soldering irons, leave a comment below and I will get to that as soon as I can. That was an easy one. Now I made a mistake, can you tell? Soldering iron heated up the wire enough to pre-shrink this heat shrink tubing. So even though I don't like it, I am gonna use some electrical tape on that. It's gonna be underneath an outer sheath of heat shrink tubing. That will uh, stop it from unraveling 100%, so I'm not too worried about that. Using electrical tape by itself, however, is not the best idea. So mistake number two, the uh, heat shrink tubing that I used on here should have been a little bigger and compensate for the electrical tape. So I just barely fit this over that bundle, but it's there, it'll get the job done. I'm gonna set up my heat gun so we can shrink this and get the other two to shrink up around here. That's it. <laughs> nice little heat gun.
I will say that's one nice thing about having a gas powered soldering iron. It doubles as a heat gun, triples as a micro torch. If you don't have a heat gun, you can just use a lighter. Just keep the flame away from the rubber. If you don't have a lighter, gas powered stove. If you don't have any of that, go to the store and get a lighter or heat gun. I don't think hair dryers really get hot enough to shrink the tubing though. There you have it. It's ugly, but it does the trick. All right, so I'm not the prettiest solder, solder, solder. I'm not the prettiest solder in the world, but it's done, it's not a fire hazard anymore. I charged my laptop and I just saved a whole bunch of money. Boom shakalaka. All right, my name is Scott. If you like this video or at least found it helpful, hit that thumbs up. If you want more videos like this, I pretty much DIY everything. Hit that subscribe button. You might as well do it right now. I got a whole ton more videos that I'm coming out with very shortly. Till next time. Is that good? I don't know. All right, I'm done. How's that even taste? How did that even taste good? Like, why? Just why? It's because it's taken me like eight months to do it. <laughs> Whatever. We're going to get it done. Ha. Are we ready to do this? I can't afford 60 bucks. What are you, nuts? It's been like this for like eight months. That wire was hanging out. You're still here? Like seriously? Peace. Stupid. Oh, I, why? Why?